Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Merfolk vs. Goblins dual deck? Showcasing cards from across Magic's history and assembled into two playable 60-card decks, Magic the Gathering dual decks have always been a product with many potential audiences in mind. This can be both a good and bad thing, because dual decks seek to offer fun, casual play for both existing players, as well as a great point of advancement for many new players. While while also containing new artwork and other premium cards for collectors, and offering financial value both for the individual cards inside as well as the unopened product. Finally, dual decks are where needed reprints can and have been strategically placed over the years, getting much needed cards to players of formats from modern to commander. And as I've said before, all of this can have an oversaturating effect on the product. Phew, so that is a lot of masters to please. Thus, is this dual deck a product that is worth it to everyone, or in trying to be a product for everyone, has it become something for no one, or just a few someones? Who are they? Let's take a look. Merfolk vs. Goblins contains the following. Two premium foil cards, in this case Master of Waves and Warren Instigator, each of which is a part of two included 60 card decks. Two quote unquote deck boxes made of cardboard that, do they hold sleeve? Yeah, yes, yes, hey, look, they hold sleeved cards finally and two spin-down counters. MSRP is $19.99. Before I examine Merfolk vs. Goblins in detail, I would like to take a moment to re-examine some of the past dual decks of the modern era. I've looked at and explained in previous dual deck videos how the older dual decks were not printed as heavily as today, and thus their financial worth, especially for the few remaining unopened decks, is very high. Dual Deck Anthology, which reprinted the earliest dual decks, happened to put these in the hands of more players. And right now, I'd just like to look at more recent dual decks, ones from the modern era, and see how they've held up. Venser vs. Koth is currently selling for 36 $7.95 at the lowest possible buy it now price on eBay. Is it versus Golgari, one of my personal favorite dual decks in terms of gameplay, is also currently selling for $37.95 at the lowest possible buy it now price. Soren versus Tybalt is at $27.95, while Heroes versus Monsters is still selling for just a few dollars above MSRP at $22. Chase versus Vraska can be found at MSRP of $19.95, as too can Speed versus is cunning, one of the worst dual decks ever made, which I one time saw discounted for $5 a box at a Target. Elspeth vs. Kiora is currently selling for $24.95 at the lowest possible buy it now price on eBay, and Zendikar vs. Eldrazi is $29.99. Blessed vs. Cursed and Obnixilis vs. Nyssa are both selling for less than their MSRP at $16.99, and the most recent dual deck, Mind vs. Might, can still be found at MSRP. So what does this tell us about dual decks from recent years? Well, in contrast to the earlier dual decks, these are printed in such high numbers that the old paradigm no longer applies. Compare all this to dual decks Jace vs. Chandra, which, despite having been reprinted as a special Japanese anime-themed illustrated dual deck, and despite being reprinted yet again in dual deck anthology, is still selling for, wow, $135 each. Yes, in part that is because it was still an overall low print run, but I am sure it is also because it contains cards such as Ancestral Vision, not to mention Jace Bellerin and a ton of cards that simply see play in a variety of formats from modern to pauper. Day and Counterspell and Incinerate, Keldon Marauders. Individually, these cards, and cards like Magma Jet and Mole Drifter and Fire Blast are not extraordinarily expensive, but it means that a lot of decks have homes for these cards should you ever want to disassemble these decks. All in all, Jace vs. Chandra was pure gas. 
If you were to buy the singles to build the complete Merfolk vs. Goblins decks, the total cost to you would be approximately $61.36, or just about three times MSRP of $19.99. Now, it is vital to keep in mind this includes tons of bulk, such as Goblin Tunneler, a 12 cent card, or Merfolk Looter, a 14 cent card. So, going into Merfolk vs. Goblins, what we're looking for is seeing whether or not there are a plethora, a large host, not just one or two cards that can have applications in multitude of decks. That's something that, despite the high print numbers, is still going to put a lot of value in this box. Let's take a look at individual financial value. So looking at cards worth at or over $1 in value, we see there's quite a few. Warren Instigator at $8.22, Goblin Chieftain at $4.40, Goblin Rabble Master at $3.10, two Goblin Ringleaders at $1.75 each or $3.50 for the pair, Krenko Mob Boss is $4.25, Master of the Pearl Trident is at $6.13, Mero Regery is at $4.45, Master of Waves is $3.50, and wow, there's a a lot of these. So the total value of all cards at or over $1 each comes to $45.50, or just more than double MSRP. Obviously, this price is likely to drop as more and more of these are opened and singles traded and sold, but for now, that's a really good ratio. Looking at past dual decks, the ratio is usually flipped, where about two-thirds of the box would just be worthless bulk, but you'd get your MSRP back in a few choice rares. Again, think of Jace versus Chandra, it's that ancestral vision where all the value is. But why is there so much value on the playable end here? Well, that's just it, because unlike many, many dual decks from past years, there's just so many of these cards that see play and have homes in other formats. Warren Instigator sees fringe play in Legacy and is a must for Goblin EDH and Highlander. Goblin Chieftain is played in Modern Goblins, and interestingly, Vintage as well as Commander. Goblin Rabble Master is played in a lot of decks. It's in Modern Jund, it's in Scred Red in Modern. Goblin Ringleader sees Fringe Legacy play. Krenko Mob Boss is a fantastic Goblin Commander, either as your general as part of the 99. Goblin Char Belcher has an entire Legacy deck built around it. Meanwhile, Master of the Pearl Trident, Merrill Regery, Master of Waves, Harbinger of the Tides are all played in both Modern and Legacy Merfolk, and even the Wake Thrasher is sometimes a sideboard option for modern merfolk, and obviously all of these find their way into any tribal commander or casual deck. Misdirection is played throughout Vintage and everything from Delver to Jeskai's Stoneblade, and sees Legacy play as well. Hey, I always ran a pair in my Legacy Food Chain deck. It's a classic cantrip. Even looking at the cards worth less than a dollar, we see gems that do see play. Tidebinder Mage is a sideboard staple for modern, Foundry Street Denizen. Heck, given that these are tribal cards, they do end up in command but also everything from modern to legacy to vintage. So even though this isn't hundreds of dollars worth of value here, you are getting more than double your MSRP for a huge lot of cards that can be used to build towards modern, legacy, and commander decks. Heck, you have the framework of modern merfolk or goblins here, and commander goblins in this 1999 product. You gotta trade to get there, but there's a blueprint and outline of how to get there. And now we come to what is probably the most important category, yet also the hardest to quantify, gameplay. Gameplay is so subjective, even though everyone wants the same thing, balance. When sitting down with a friend and newer established, you do not want one deck overpowering the other consistently, or else there's little enjoyment to be had in a match. After half a dozen games personally, and polling others who have had a chance to get multiple games as well, I can say with some certainty that these are fairly balanced but linear builds, meaning both Merfolk and Goblins have a strong aggro foundation. Both decks are seeking to jam creatures out on the battlefield and swing in. Both also have an assortment of non-creature spells. With Merfolk, these are more cantrips and tempo-based spells, whereas Goblins is more aggressive and just putting additional tokens on the field, pumping them, or doing a little direct damage. I found the Goblins deck to be slightly faster on average than Merfolk, but Merfolk was less linear, meaning that it had other options and styles of play. Overall, I found gameplay to be fairly balanced. The biggest drawback being that that gameplay was somewhat repetitive, as these are both tribal aggro decks at heart. Again, this is all highly subjective, but I do not see what are more glaring problems in deck construction, such as we saw in Speed vs. Cunning. Still, it's no Izzet vs. Golgari in terms of repetitive fun. Final conclusion, for long-term financial gain, Merfolk vs. Goblins is not a product to buy, 
store on a shelf, and expect to increase much, if any, in value over the years. However, for opening and playing with, this product is excellent and has appealed to many, many different types of Magic the Gathering players. While there is no singular Chase reprint in the deck, they are composed of a host of cards with modest financial value that see play in a multitude of formats. Commander players can get good cards out of this, modern and legacy tribal players can get good cards out of this, and obviously that means these pieces make great trade fodder as well. Finally, both decks are balanced against one another, making for fun gameplay, whether you are a new player looking to try something more complicated, or just someone who loves casual play at the kitchen table. There's something for nearly everyone here. It's not overwhelming value, but it's solid. It covers nearly every base, and at $19.99, that's impressive, and it's an A-. minus. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. Which dual deck do you think was the best in terms of gameplay and overall value? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, when buying dual decks, especially dual decks, if these are for sale at your local game store for the same price as at Target and Walmart, that money helps out the place where you play Magic so much more than it does that Target or Walmart where you can't even get a game. So when it's possible, when it's reasonable, be sure to spend that money where you spend time playing Magic. That's at your local game store. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.